removal of uranium from contaminated water by clay ceramics in flow-through columns. We're taking a look at MDPI right here. How is it done? Uranium contamination groundwater increasingly concerns rural residents depending on home wells for their drinking water in communities where uranium is a source of contamination. Established technologies to clean up contaminated aquifers are ineffective in large contaminated areas or prohibitively expensive. And preamble reactive barriers are low-cost alternatives to these methods. In this paper, it actually talks about clay ceramic pellets were used as an investigation for reactive barriers. So what did they do? Uranium contamination of groundwater increasingly concerns rural residents depending on their home wells for their drinking water in communities with a legacy of mining, as well as those living in areas naturally occurring uranium is a source of contamination. And keeping in mind uranium is not just around nuclear power plants, it's not just around industrial facilities. This is an issue that is ubiquitous even in communities where there's maybe not tons of heavy industry. It still exists naturally in rocks, in soil. In the United States, naturally occurring elevated uranium in groundwater is widespread. In the West, it's scattered in the eastern states. Also, significant problems stemming from the legacy of uranium development still exist in Colorado Plateau area. Uranium in groundwater is most commonly found in its hexavalent oxidation state, UVI, or uranium ion, and the aqueous solubility makes it difficult to physically remove uranium you know, from water. The cleanup of contaminated aquifers is difficult due to the inaccessibility to subsurface and the volume of the soil and groundwater recurring treatment. And established technologies such as pump and treat, soil excavation are ineffective in large contaminated areas or they're prohibitively expensive. So what did they do? There's two different clays from Arizona, Cheeto, the Smicite mineral and the New Mexico Gallup, the Lillite mineral, were used for the production of ceramic pellets. Both clays are two-in-one layer minerals where the oxidative sheet is bonded onto tetrahedon sheets and these clay minerals have significant permanent negative charges which contribute to caution exchange capacity or CEC of clays and the permanent negative charge in the clay results from the substitution of divalent cautions for trivalent cautions in the octahedral sheet for example the permanent negative charge in the smecto group results from the substitution of divalent cautions for trivalent cautions in the octahedral sheet and the CEC is a measure of the clay's ability to hold positively charged ions Uranium sorbs to clay through this unique characteristic, as we can see here, and dry clays from Arizona Cheeto and New Mexico Gallup were mixed with water and spread into a silicone mold in the form of a pellet. You can actually see pictures right here. And these samples were synthered in thermal curing in a laboratory furnace, and the first densification took between 150 Celsius from drawing residual water on clay surfaces. The clay pellets were further heated until the chemically bonded water with clay molecules escaped from the clay. And the curing process is well described in reference, as we can see right here. Flow through the columns were fabricated using acrylic tubes and having the effect of 25.4 centimeters and internal diameter of 2.5 centimeters. The columns were have four lateral sampling ports capped with mineral valent values, and the columns were equipped with check values at the inlet and outlet, which allowed for draining liquids of these columns. And we can also see the columns were packed with clay pellets. Uranium solution was prepared by dissolving a 0 0.0015 gram uranium nitrate hexadenitrin into two liters of deionized water and a pearlectic pump was used to feed the uranium at 5.5 milliliters to the column and also waste like it was connected with two liters platypus play bottle and the gauge needle was injected in the minerva port value so what results did they get ceramic pellets were made from arizona cheetah clay and new mexico gallup as shown in figure three and the samples were image using the scanning electron microscopy and we can see them right here from the arizona cheeto the sem samples of the cheeto clay left and right and we can see them from the ports the distance from each column and the statistical analysis of the uranium concentration data for port one and port four as well as epa safe drinking water limits are looked here and you can see the different graphs and how it goes down what do they conclude flow through experiments suggest that clay pellet barriers can effectively intercept and remove uranium from contaminated groundwater but the efficiency was not decreased considerable in time and no noticeable permeability change was found in the column. So they're not susceptible to clogging or rapid passivation by reactive productions into corrosive products. So very interesting study. You can actually take a look at this, see how they cleared up uranium. That being said, uranium is still a problem in groundwater. That's why it's always a good idea to periodically test your water to make sure there's not high levels of uranium.